what was that story like for you going from being, you know, starting your career or like starting like your, I guess you're as a student studying engineering and what is like that transition to going to be an investor? And does that actually impact you at all in terms of that background in engineering? How does that influence you as an investor? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. It's, it's, I think it's, um, it's a journey. Um, you know, I, there's always something, a thread in my mind that I continue to pull on, even the child. Um, you know, we just um, passed the, I think it's um, in 1986, the Challenger explosion. Uh, I was seven years old uh, and it got me really thinking hard about space and wanting to go into, you know, uh, aeronautical uh, engineering. And uh, Purdue happened to be one of those places where more astronauts had graduated from Purdue than any other college in the, in the world. And so for me, it was like, oh, you know, that's a, this is a college I should apply to when I want to go to you know, um, at the right time. And, uh, and I did, and that's where I ended up going. I didn't study um, aeronautical engineering, but, but I did study electrical engineering. And that is actually what led me to Silicon Valley uh, for uh, after undergrad. And um, in Silicon Valley, I was designing, learning how to design chips. And that's what I came to Silicon Valley uh, to do is uh, design chips. And so uh, it was all these little points in, t in my life that allowed me to take the next step and the next step after that. Um, turns out that my first day on the job um, at this company, Xilinx, um, I was sitting in a cubicle and, you know, had a, this amazing computer at Sun, uh, Sun Workstation. And um, I was um, using the Netscape browser and, you know, like buying books on Amazon to go to, as I was going to grad school at Stanford. And, and uh, you know, just this new search engine had just come out called Google. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you, you, you look at all those companies, like you, I started to investigate who are the people the people starting these companies, but who are also the inventors, you know, as an engineer, you're thinking who's invented this stuff. Uh, and then who are the people who get behind these companies? And it turns out it was these people called venture capitalists. Mm -hmm. And uh, furthermore, the company that I was working for was also backed by venture capitalists. And believe it or not, there was one thing in common between all five of those companies that I just mentioned, Google, Amazon, Sun, Xilinx and Netscape, uh, Kleiner Perkins was the mm -hmm. first investor in all of those companies. And so I started to research what, what do people like at Kleiner Perkins look like? Uh, who are these investors, venture capitalists? What do they look like? What do they study to become venture capitalists? And that really planted the seed very early on in my professional career as an engineer, uh, what it meant to be a venture capitalist. And that's like the journey that I started to take down um, b beyond that, which is uh, going from an engineer to moving into product uh, and then marketing and then going back to, back to business school because I, mm -hmm. I read that a lot of these venture capitalists went to business school after having been engineers. And, uh, and there was only two business schools that seemed, they seemed to go to, which was one was Harvard and one was Stanford. And I said, okay, well, I'm applying to one of those because I'd already gone to Stanford and luckily I'd <laughs> gotten in and um, and then after that, I just set my sights on finding a job in venture capital. Um, and so I finished business school in 2005 and uh, in 2003, I was uh, solitarily focused on finding a job in venture capital. 